Aloha. Aloha. That's how we do it here. Good morning, and welcome to the Lahaina United Methodist Church. On this, our seventh Sunday after Easter, can you believe that? This is Ascension Sunday. This is the day that all of the disciples were waiting for, looking for, expectantly. Today, they're told about their gift. We're all going to take a deep breath this morning because we have all been given the gift of what is known as coastal hair. And that's what happens when the wind blows around here. And we like to call it the trades. It drives the cats nuts. And after a, a couple of weeks of it, we're a little tired of it too. But it's beautiful. And this morning, my husband and I were greeted at 8 o'clock on our deck by looking out over Lanai and seeing a double rainbow. And that was our gift this morning. Two thank yous before we begin this morning. There's two little people that wander around our church all the time and do beautiful, wonderful things. The first is this lady right down here in yellow, Carol Mark. And every Sunday, she puts her heart and soul into flowers for us. And for that, we want to say thank you. And the second is another little gal who probably lives at this church when she's not anyplace else. And that's Caroline Anthony. And for her and her darling mom, Lucy, whom we're going to send off to the mainland this week, she's the one that puts together all the lay every Saturday. It's a very wonderful, fragrant thing to do, but it does take her most of the day to do it. By the time the flowers are picked and strung and graciously brought back here to be set aside for Sunday morning. For that, thank you, Caroline, every morning. And with that, let's begin. Before uh, Judy leads us in our call to worship, um, we will go over some uh, ministry highlights. But uh, I just, again, I'd like to reiterate thanks for the, uh, Carol and for Caroline for the work that they do, and also for Lucy. My lay smells ex especially fragrant today, and the flowers are beautiful, so thank you. So uh, today I'd like to point out a few ministry highlights. Uh, to, at 11 o'clock, we have a Bible study uh, we are working through um, a program, in the spring program uh, of the church, the United Methodist Church. Uh, today, we're talking about, uh, today we're talking about the ascension of Jesus uh, in our service, and then we will be talking about the transfiguration in our, in our Bible study today, and that's at 11 o'clock. And so if you'd like to join us, uh, you can connect online via Zoom. So all those of you that are connecting uh, remotely uh, can connect to our events page on our website, which is lumcmaui.org, click on events, and then go to um, the Bible study for today and uh, the Sunday school, and then that'll get you connected to our Bible study. And then we're also having it inside the church as well, so those of you that would like to stay uh, for that, uh, we, we would welcome you. Uh, this afternoon uh, at, I think, 6 p.m., uh, uh, we're celebrating, our Tongan ministry is celebrating Father's Day. 5 p.m., I'm sorry, thank you. 5 p.m., our Tongan ministry is celebrating Father's Day out in the back area in this, uh, they sort of the, it's now kind of our picnic area back there. Uh, it's where we roast uh, pigs and do all sorts of wonderful things. That's at six, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, in the back behind the preschool. On Wednesday is another Bible study. We're working through the book of Exodus and that also can be uh, accessed through Zoom as well. On Thursday is our Tongan Women's, Women's Ministry Prayer Group. At, uh, that's at 7 p.m., uh, again in the back area. 
uh, we meet outside. And then on Friday, there's another uh, prayer group, men and women, at 7 p.m. So all those, those are our events for the week. Also, those of you that are on the trustees committee, uh, we have a meeting at 2 p.m. And uh, I had sent out an email message with the link if you'd like to connect via Zoom, or we'll also be inside the church as well. And that is all I have for now. Um, and I ask Judy to come up and do our call to worship. Thank you. Please stand and join with me in the call to worship. Lord, we stand boldly among the world with the understanding that as servant leaders, we are observed and often criticized. This is our call. For this reason, we ask for your grace. Lord, we take our post understanding that anyone who cries friend, friend, may very well be a foe. For this reason, we ask for your mercy. Just as Jesus was betrayed, so that scripture might be fulfilled, we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For this reason, we ask for your discernment. As leaders in your kingdom, we are faced with hard situations. For this reason, we ask for your wisdom. Lord, we want to lead like you. Your hymn of praise this morning is Come Christians, Join and Sing, and the words are in your bulletin. seated. Please be in an attitude of prayer for our prayer of invocation. Holy Spirit, be with us in our worship this day. Draw us ever closer to you that we may become one. Draw us ever closer to your word that we may be wise. Draw us ever closer to your world that we may serve and love as you guide us to do. In your holy name we pray, amen. And now we share our, our joys and concerns, uh, some of the joys and concerns that have been shared over the last few weeks uh, via email. I will also go and check to see those that are joining us online, uh, see if anybody has anything to share. So I'll check that out here. We have a number of people watching, Linda and, oops, where does it go here? Uh, Linda Bryce is watching us and other people are watching us. Uh, nobody has submitted anything yet online. We like to read those out in case somebody has a, a prayer request they'd like to submit before we get started. Okay. So as we, as I'm, 
read the, the prayers and concerns, I'm going to go, because we have so many uh, joys and concerns, uh, I'm going to go in groups, and then at the end, I will prompt, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer at the end of each group. Prayers for Chris Wellen, uh, who played piano for us over the Easter, our Easter service outside. Um, he has had a stroke, and he's at Maui Memorial Hospital now. Uh, so he is um, fighting to, um, to come back to full health. Uh, he's doing well, but he's, he has some, uh, some problems and issues that we've been praying for all week. Uh, so we pray for him and his wife, Velvet, who's been at his side all week. Uh, so, uh, so let's uh, keep him in our prayers and pray for a full healing uh, for Chris and also for uh, comfort and rest for Velvet. For Mar Marilyn, uh, who is recovering from rec a recent medical procedure, and for Ken, who's fighting health challenges, we pray that God surrounds them uh, with uh, God's healing grace and rest. For Natalie, uh, Heather's mom, who had fallen and had a concussion, but is now recovering at home, we pray for uh, that she's able to get back to full strength that she's with her family. Uh, she's in Lakewood, California. Prayers for Mary Grace and her son uh, for repairs on their home and to keep, keep her home safe for her and her son. Prayers for Phil Chavez, uh, with whom, uh, whose mom is, and uh, Lorraine is ill. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. For those with cancer, for a little girl named Jolene who's been battling cancer, doctors have informed the family that if this next round of chemo doesn't work, they're out of options to treat her. So we pray um, that the great healer can be with her uh, and give her, uh, just give her healing and strength to get through this last round of chemo and then we pray that this treat treatment is successful and we pray that uh, Jolene can have a, a long, a uh, wonderful life. Prayers for Ryan, Ryan, a young man who's had surgery for cancer, recovering at home now and being cared for by his loving family, Lori and Jeff Randall. We pray for the family of Ann Merrill, uh, who had recently passed away after her battle of cancer. We pray for Lindsay, who's uh, fighting breast cancer and undergoing chemotherapy. Um, we pray for her and her daughter and, and her mom, Margie, uh, as you surround them with your love and strength and assurance and healing. We pray for Kellyanne, who's uh, healing after surgery after breast cancer. We pray for Janelle Hayashi, fighting stage four cancer. And for Lori Ramsey, who's uh, fighting stage four colon cancer and awaiting surgery. And we offer prayers of praise for Robin Hung, who's Hong, who's doing very well after uh, recent surgery for breast cancer. And for the family of Kathy Tryon, who recently passed away after a long battle with colon cancer. For all those who, have, who are struggling and have struggled for cancer, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, for our ongoing re requests, for Ted and Marie Baker, longtime friends of our congregation in Eugene, Oregon, now under hospice care asking for prayers for their family as well, uh, for Lord to surround them with strength and assurance. Prayers for Saldi and his family who have recently lost his mother, Bern Bernice Velasco, to COVID. Uh, we pray that uh, the family can soon come together and share the love that they had for their mother and find assurance from our great savior. Prayers for Jim Donaldson in rehab and healing from COVID. Prayers for Vanessa's cousin Aseta and her family as her father Lito is struggling with medical condition, uh, problems. We pray for Lynn and Judy Ebison and the Ebison family in Albuquerque going through a difficult time, as well for his son and his granddaughter. Prayers for Christopher for direction in his life. Prayers for Marceline who's struggling with allergies. For Olivia's son Colepe who is ill in Tonga. We pray for the family of Kalonusi for strength and comfort. We pray for Mike Nauman showing improvement after, his battle, after receiving chemotherapy and for his wife, Sarah, who cares for them. We pray for the Hartman family and the loss of, of Gail. We pray for Troy and family during challenging times to find comfort and strength in time of need. We're praying for Jack in North Carolina 
for healing after being hospitalized for COVID and for his family as they care for him. And we pray for Linda Takahashi with fighting health issues. And uh, we also pray for her husband, Les, who's home with her, uh, taking care of her. Lord, we ask that you surround all of these people with your love, your assurance, your healing, and your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now some prayers for our community. For all the medical staff and first responders as they serve our community during the pandemic. And, also, uh, and we also especially pray for Pastor Amy and the chaplains at Maui Memorial Hospital who are our spiritual um, link inside the hospital. I've talked many times with the chaplains over there as we have uh, members of our church and friends uh, that are in the hospital and she, um, she's been so good at sharing um, our concerns and our prayers. We pray for them. We pray for their protection and for their strength and assurance during this time. We pray for those impacted financially from COVID, those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, as well as those who continue to heal. Prayers for our leaders uh, for guidance and protection, and may they make their efforts to work, may they make efforts to work together to solve the many problems we're trying to address and work through. Prayers for the children and immigrants of, and the immigrants at the southern border for safety and reunion with family and peaceful lives. Prayers for the families of the victims of, rec of the recent mass shootings in our country and for the targets of racism in this country and for all the senseless violence that happens in our country. We pray that God's love can be, uh, come, come forth through his people so that uh, we may share love and companionship and uh, work against uh, these, these, these horrible epidemics. Lord, and we pray for all, for all these concerns Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And for all the prayers spoken and unspoken, let us pray. God of glory, you have exalted your son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph over your kingdom on earth and in the heavens. Do not let us remain without comfort for our worries, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us. Make your compassion felt by those who pray, we, who pray today for the people that they love. Fill them with healing, courage, love, and assurance. Bind us together by our prayers so that we can become attuned to the needs of our families, friends, and neighbors. Help us to remember to pray for those who hurt us. Seek out the, let us, help us to seek out the intentions of our hearts uh, and let us share them with you so that we may be encouraged by the love that you fill us with. We ask these in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join with me in the unison prayer. Lord of amazing visions, Prepare our hearts and our spirits this day to receive your glad tidings of an advocate. Help us be ready to be your disciples in all that we do, say, and think. For we ask this in the name of our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1 beginning with verse 1. Acts, the book of Acts, was written by Luke and he wrote more of the New Testament than anyone else. Being a doctor and a companion to the disciples. 
the Holy Spirit, which is what this is all about, was written more than 50 times in the book of Acts. In the first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with the water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood before them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And our second scripture is from the book of Ephesians. This is Paul's letter, Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. This is Ephesians 1, beginning with verse 15. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for all this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God the God of your Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Now let us join together for our affirmation of faith, which can be found in your bulletins. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, 
who works in us and others by the Spirit, we trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now usually at this time is our offering and we have our uh, Tongan choir usually sing the offering, um, but we're not able to do uh, choir music yet. So I will just take this moment and we are also not passing the basket around for reasons of COVID. So if you'd like to leave an offering, we have a bowl in the back of the church if, you, if you're so moved. Loving God of both comfort and challenge, we have been blessed to know the feeling of being surrounded by your loving arms like a child. Yet we know that that staying in this place is not the place where we can live, where we can be forever. You send us to be part of the world, and with all its ugliness, anger, hate, deceit, and betrayals, we lean on you. But we are also not of that world. You call us to give so that love, compassion, and hope might be set loose. We are not giving as those who are of the world, expecting to receive in transaction. We give instead out of gratitude for your loving heart made known to us in Christ. Use us in this way, we pray in the blessed name of Christ, who by your love overcame death. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is... Breathe on me, breath of God. And the words can be found in your bulletin if you'd like to sing along.
Our sermon text today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the word of the Lord. As children, we develop the courage to ride a bicycle by putting training wheels on our back tires. And when we finally seem confident to speed around without those encumbered, being encumbered by those training wheels, our parents or maybe an uncle or an aunt or a big brother or a big sister take those training wheels off and then we go. And we're surprised to see that we're able to balance uh, on the bicycle without falling over. I actually got a chance to watch this recently as uh, Noyao, little Noyao was, got a little bicycle and uh, it started off with training wheels but he didn't la last long in those training wheels. He was going back and forth in the parking lot and finally one day those training wheels came off and he was zooming all over the place. Uh, and so he didn't have those training wheels to slow him down. We need the security of training wheels though to, in our lives and we need boundaries to safely learn the fundamentals of our craft. And we need someone who is already a master to teach us and to guide us. Before I became a pastor in charge here in Lahaina, I went to seminary to learn the ap academics required to be a pastor. But I also, wh also while I was in school, I got hands-on training um, as a uh, youth pastor and as an office administrator in a church in Rosemead, California. And my boss and mentor, Dev Rever Rever Reverend, sorry, Deborah O oh, treated me more like an assistant. Uh, and to boost my confidence, she gave me more and more responsibilities. And I was allowed to do many things that a pastor would normally do in a church. I would lead Bible studies. I would preach at our, monthly at our English services. And I would write the first draft of our order, to worship, order of worship. So I'd write the, the prayers and pick the hymns. And most of the time, uh, Reverend Deborah had uh, gone with what I chose, but sometimes she would alter them to, to match more of the message that she was giving that Sunday. And as a youth pastor, I was a little too old to be hip, according to the, the Zoomer kids. And Zoomers, if you're not familiar with that term, are, are, young, are the generation after the millennials. They're the uh, high school students and the college students today. And so I, was, I really actually was more of a father figure to them. And, uh, and a lot of those kids didn't grow up in the church. They came to the church, uh, they came to the church to, uh, as, as kind of a volunteer project. And um, the church saw all these kids show up and they said, well, we should do things with them. And, and our Reverend John O, who is Pastor Deborah's brother, had designed uh, a program around them with music. He was a musician, so he, kind of, he made it really fun. And so these kids stayed around. And, over, over the years, and I inherited many of these young people. I got the good fortune of meeting uh, John this last week. He, he was uh, traveling in Maui. So we, we met up and we shared old times and talked about a lot of the great things that he's doing and, and agreed to, uh, to kind of work together because we're both working together in our, in our uh, progress through ministry. And I also had the, the, uh, excellent, an excellent creative partner uh, named Mishi, who is, um, her, or uh, her full name is Michelle Kison Simbal, who is a terrific at organizing 
and planning a social and planning social events and and also communicating and she was also much closer to the kids age uh, than I was so together we as a team we had a really great uh, youth ministry and so I learned so much from that and, and I learned and one of the great benefits from that experience was that one of the the youth leaders that we had uh, decided to become a pastor and so he's now in seminary going to school to become a pastor so uh, uh, Pastor John and I were talking about uh, Quan uh, this last week and how proud we were to have played a part in his in his walk so through all of that experience I got experience to lead my own church this Sunday before Pentecost, we celebrate Jesus' ascension into heaven. And it's a time where Jesus is now leaving the ministry to the disciples. And he's, joining, he's going in heaven to actually lead from heaven. For the last seven weeks, we have been sharing the hope that we have in the resurrection. We know that death does not have the last word. And no matter what kind of mess we make of things, Christ offers us the chance to begin again. Jesus has called us to be ambassadors of his beloved community and to proclaim his good news that shows us how to love each other. And, and from this, we find the courage to live out our mission in a cynical world. But Jesus also left something else with those disciples. Uh, and we, we talk about that next week as we talk about the, uh, as we talk about the Pentecost. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about the anticipation for that, the, which is the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Luke's account of Jesus' meetings with his disciples after resurrection relay how Jesus gave his disciples the hope to build a new church when all hope seemed lost when Jesus was on the cross. Uh, we read these wonderful stories. Many of them uh, are, uh, are in the Gospel of Luke or, and some of them in the Gospel of John. And those two Gospels actually interesting kind of parallel each other a little bit um, in Luke Jesus goes and visits all of the disciples and in John Jesus visited visits twice because Thomas wasn't there the first time so we get like a different window on each of these these stories and then we hear this wonderful account of uh, the first time um, the, uh, Jesus's followers found out that Jesus was alive and that was when the women went to the tomb to, to, uh, to, to prepare Jesus for burial, and he wasn't there. And they saw an angel who told them that Jesus had risen. When they told the disciples this, they didn't believe the women, and so Peter went down to check it himself. And he also verified that the tomb was empty. But they were still perplexed. They didn't know what was going on. And then we have the account of uh, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, we talked about that a few weeks ago. And they had encountered Jesus, who at first they didn't recognize, but later they recognized when Jesus broke bread with them. And, uh, but Luke's gospel is the only one to contain this story, uh, the ascension into heaven. Jesus is ascending into heaven. And as, as, as Judy had mentioned, uh, that uh, they mentioned the Holy Spirit. Luke mentions the Holy Spirit 50 times in, uh, throughout, I guess, the, the, the book of Acts. And also, we talk about that uh, here as well. And he gave his followers some final instructions about how to carry on with his ministry. And Luke was interested in emphasizing how their community, their church, represents the kingdom of God. Jesus, as we know, was not leaving his disciples alone. He promised in verse 49 what God, that God would send his promise, as we read in English, but the original Greek word is evangelia. And from this Greek word, we get promise, but we also get the word evangelism. So when we share, when we evangelize, we're really sharing the gift of God's promise. And that promise is that God will not leave us alone. God will be with us through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that leads us. And this Holy Spirit gave them the power to kickstart their community. You might have noticed uh, that the reading from the book of Acts seemed very similar to our reading from Luke. And Judy pointed out that both of those writings were written by Luke. Uh, um, so uh, he wrote uh, the gospel and then the book of Acts as sort of a sequel to the gospel. And we get this term, we call him Dr. Luke, because 
Paul me mentions Luke in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, and he calls them him the beloved physician. And Luke was companions with the disciples. He went out on these excursions. So a lot of, as you're reading through the book of Acts, you see that a lot of them, the, the, the accounts sound like firsthand experiences. Luke mentioned, especially when they were on the boat, that he, like he was there. And so we get the sense that, and this is how scholars have decided that um, the writers of these gospels was probably Luke, the physician, Paul's companion, who would have had firsthand knowledge of many of the things that Paul did. So it's kind of like these two books are kind of like a two-part series. We've got the Gospel of Luke, which tells us the story of Jesus' ministry, death, and resurrection. And then we have the Book of Acts, which tells us the story of the work of the apostles to build the church um, around the world. The word church comes from, I think I mentioned this before, ecclesia. Uh, this is where we, uh, we've come up with the term uh, church, but ecclesia really means an assembly, uh, a community. So really, the church is a community. It's, it's not a building uh, and with all the other trappings, but it's us, it's the people. The disciples were bolstered by these post-resurrection encounters with Jesus, and they wondered and were likely hoping that Jesus would take up the ministry where he left off, and they would follow him and do his bidding with him there all, always with them as, his, as their companion. But Jesus, however, had given them the authority to lead the church through his death and resurrection. They had now had the powerful message of redemption to mend the hearts of those living in a broken world. This idea that everyone, no one is, is a, um, away from the, from the grace of God. That God loves everyone, that everyone can turn their lives around. This powerful message helped them take this, this, uh, this community all over the Roman Empire. And Jesus' disciples would be given the divine power to lead that movement. And Jesus told them that the, God's promise would guide them as they built the church. As Luke 24, verse 49 says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. In Jesus' final conversation recorded in Luke, Jesus told his disciples that they should stay in Jerusalem and wait for a blessing that would empower them to do great things. In Luke's sequel, the book of Acts, verse, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, we hear more detail about what that promise was where Jesus says, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So they were reborn, in a sense, baptized, and that's what we celebrate in, uh, with baptism is rebirth into a new uh, creature. We believe that we are reborn in that spirit today, and that that, and that Holy Spirit leads us and guides us as we lead the church. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Jesus said that they would be clothed from power from on high. And this power will give them the ability to do and teach amazing things. And within one generation, new church communities were starting throughout the Roman Empire. After Jesus ascended into heaven, two angels appeared and stood next uh, to the disciples and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, the angels were saying, why are you standing there with your mouths hanging open? Go off and, and do something. Go and do what Jesus told you to do. They had work to do. And so next week we will celebrate Pentecost and we'll read about this dramatic arrival of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised that, and this would embolden them, uh, embolden them to go out and, and spread this message. We will talk about how the Holy Spirit worked in them and how the Holy Spirit works in us today. But today we, will reflect, we reflect on how the disciples were left in anticipation. Instead of going away frustrated, however, they went away with joy. Uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 51 through 52 says, 
they worshiped Jesus as he was risen up into heaven and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. So they were waiting in joyful anticipation of waiting for that power to come. It's a cliche, but to get to our goal, we need to have the courage to st take the first step. And then we need the courage to take each successive steps along the way. For much of my young life, I was a shy introvert. And in a large gathering of unfamiliar people, I would usually just quietly smile and not say very much. But time has changed me, however, as many of you probably have noted. <laughs> And um, I've become a bit more of an extrovert. And I don't have any explanation for it, except that I think that the strength, there's a strength that comes from within me. And I can only attribute that to the Holy Spirit. But, and, and this has given me the courage and the power to speak and to go on and, and, to, and, and do the things that God is leading me to do in this world. Now, sermons, sermons often make it sound as if the pastor has everything figured out. And the word preaching today has become synonymous with talking down to people or telling people what to do. But I can assure you that I don't have all the answers and I lean on God and the Spirit to help me put one foot in front of the other. And maybe after a few years of theological and pastoral training, I've learned a little bit about finding answers in Scripture. But I know really that a lot of my strength comes uh, from moments like these, uh, to when we're gathered together in, in church, uh, from times when I can uh, meet with you, this is where the spirit moves within me. So really, uh, the, our strength comes from each other. It comes uh, in the church, and the Holy Spirit guides us to come together, and the Holy Spirit is among us. As I mentioned many times, Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my presence, there, there I am. So, each week I might share a little insight of something I might have in the moment, but I'm sure that some of my wisdom later on will seem naive as I learn more things in the future. Faced with a new challenge, we often do not feel as if we're up to the task, and sometimes we're paralyzed with fear. Jesus knew his disciples would feel that way, and that is why he asked them to remain in Jerusalem together and then to wait, to wait for them to be clothed from a power on high. And so the, what did they do while they were in Jerusalem? They got together, they prayed, they continually went to the temple and blessed God. And Jesus had come to the, and as Jesus had come to the end of his time with them, he was, it, he was telling them that they would be the ones that they would take, that they would take on the church and that they would be led from, from, the, from God's spirit, that they would not be alone. Our affirmation of faith and our liturgy reminds us that Jesus works in us and others by the Spirit, as, it's, as our uh, affirmation of faith said today. And the Spirit is forever teaching us so, uh, how to be a church. And, and, we're and we're learning and continuously learning so that we can celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, love and serve others, seek justice and resist evil, and proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. So, life is a continuous learning process, but we take heart because we know that in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our closing hymn today is the Hymn of Promise, which can be found in your bulletins if you'd like to follow along. <laughs>
before we gather together for our circle of ohana and, and we sing the Hawaii Aloha, I'd like to uh, mention that we have a, a gift shop downstairs. So as you uh, go downstairs, if you go off to the left, we have some wonderful gifts in there. We have um, some uh, beautiful CDs of our Tongan choir and a, a CD from our previous pastor who was a wonderful singer, uh, Pastor Pula Ala Lima. And uh, those CDs are available downstairs. There are beautiful cards, hand-drawn cards that are available and some lovely uh, gift items. So if you'd like to check that out, it's just right downstairs and to your right. Father and the Son. And 